TitleMatchNetwork.com. Word of Von Erich's like, were they you out know, of control? I, I can't say anything bad about any of the Von Erich's. None of them ever said a bad word to me or, or were mean or, or asshole-ish or, you know, um, Fritz could have paid better, but, um, you know, a lot of people could say that, but just said, geez, I mean, you could just tell that, that uh, they couldn't wind their ass or scratch their watch. Um, Did you see any craziness at all in the locker room? Yeah, well, no, just, well, like, it, it was like, it was like more goofy. It was like the kid, they were the kids. They used to, it's the only territory I've ever worked where they would give you the directions to the spot shows written out. And I wondered about that. I was like, well, we got a map. We can, you know, we're used to just this town at the high school. Right. We'll find it, 150 miles, 300 miles, whatever. The boys couldn't find it. They'd go to towns 150 miles from Dallas, and if they went to the wrong school and there wasn't no matches there, wasn't a ring set up, they'd just turn around and go home instead of asking. So they'd give everybody written directions because they didn't want to be like the boys right. to be the only ones. Carrie one night in um, in a locker room, he's he's listening to his Walkman, he's lacing up his boots, and somebody said, "Hey, Carrie, come here!" It's okay, and he stood up and whoop, and whiplashed himself. He'd laced his Walkman headphones up in his boots. <laughs> And, you know, he just, like, one day we're sitting there in the sportatorium and he busts through and he said, anybody seen my dog? We're like, no. Okay. He went, he didn't bring his dog with him. <laughs> you know, and, and Mike, um, not Mike, but uh, what was the, the young one? Dave, Chris, no, Chris. Yeah, Chris. <clears throat> We'd be on, like, Southwest Airlines. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'm not a good flyer anyway. I'd be, I'd be like sitting there looking around, waiting for the terrorists, and, you know, the bombs come on and we'd see if the wing still has any cracks in it. So I noticed a lot of shit. He'd walk down the aisle sometimes with the, with his brothers. He was 13 and you could tell he didn't know whether he was on a plane, train, boat, car. <laughs> his eyes was just lolling around. It just, you know, I didn't, I've never associated with him outside of the ring. I, not because I didn't want to, just we weren't, you know, that wasn't the deal. Um, they did their thing, and I did my thing. I was a little, you know, semi-rookie wrestling manager, and they're, you know, legends and demigods and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, they just, they were nice. They just, None of them were, were surgeons to begin with. And the various accidents and wrecks and catastrophes and brain concussions and all the shit and toxic shock and whatever, you know, it was like it gradually, that's why, that's what killed the town. They looked up to these guys as, I mean, they were better than the Cowboys. They were, they were better than, than any sporting team that Dallas has ever had. They were gods. They were rock stars and, and, and football players and Cowboys all rolled up into one. They had full page color pictures of them in the Dallas Times Herald, for God's sake. Uh, I mean, I, just in my medium spot in world class, could call up the, the the nighttime guy on the biggest rock station in Dallas and say, hey, can I come over and uh, program your songs for the rest of the night? Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> play this, play that. Um, what was it? Uh, Texas, Rocks 102, whatever. You know, right. I'm sitting up there on the 30th floor of this, this building looking out over Dallas, and I am talking on the air to millions of people saying, I want to play this now, just because I can, because I'm minorly associated with wrestling, okay? You can imagine what it was like for the Von Erichs. Dallas, Texas, uh, they could walk in car lots and just say, can I borrow that for a while? Sure, take this Maserati. It would, God. But when people slowly start to see that, shit there, you know, no, oh, boy, oh God. And then it just, and then it got like, oh, that ugly, hideous boil. And then it was like, hey, there's so many wrecks and so many problems and so many deaths. And then they're just like, oh, wrestling. Whereas wrestling was like, you know, let me bow down to you. Now wrestling, oh, County Fair Ferris wheel runner, you know, in, in like three years, it just changed like that. Right. It was just total, you could tell a, a whole city got disillusioned all at the same time. And and that just bleh, killed business. We went back there, <clears throat> we left in the middle of 85 and went back like in 87 when Crockett ran a show. And whereas, you know, people used to, oh, wow, it's like, yeah, I used to watch that just all over the place. Right, right. right. And Dad and Reunion Arena, Arena never drew for ages after that. Even Crockett couldn't draw. Uh, the you know the Dallas promote world class nothing could draw until finally I think the WWF. I guess it had just been long enough that people forgot or new people came along because then all of a sudden they just started coming back in droves again because we used to make a joke about it. Don't go. Don't run Dallas. Don't go to Dallas. Geez, we'll die in Dallas. And they now they sell out Reunion Arena in the first day. It, you get over everything after the forest fire, right, right. you know, it always regrows eventually, but God, it was, it was horrible there for a while. It was like, 
the Sheik killed Ohio in the late 70s. Um, Jerry Jarrett went up there to try to get TV on in Cincinnati. And he went to, uh, you know, the, the, I think it was the NBC station, but Channel 5, you know, big station in Cincinnati, right? And we're right on down the road in Louisville on the NBC station. You know, we'd like to come up here. Let me show you something. Station manager brings him back, puts a tape of the Sheik show in when it was really, I mean, right before big time wrestling, big time country, when it was as bad as you could get without being just total hoke. Right. There's the Sheik and he's 65 years old and he's got whoever he's got and he's got the head back and he's got the snake, right? And he's putting the snake and, he, and it's like, it's a defang. I think the snake may have been dead for Christ's sake. He's just making it wiggle with his hand and he's blading the guy and a close up on the TV, you right. know, just awful, horrible, slocky, sloppy shit. That's why I'm not going to have wrestling on my station. So there wasn't any wrestling in, in Ohio and, and Michigan for like seven or eight years. TBS comes along. Now they're seeing George Championship. Wow, Ted DiBiase. Wow, the Freebirds. Wow, blah, blah, blah. They go the Northern Tour because the cable reaches, and now all of a sudden it's brand new again. All the people you see, the Sheik and Bobo Brazil, are now having Alzheimer's or they're, they're in the wheelchair or whatever, and this is a new audience that hasn't been poisoned. Boom. You know, you, you can kill territories, but you can't, you know, kill them for good. You can just hurt them for a long time. How'd you wind up in Crockett? Um, the well, after we'd been in Dallas for like, I guess, <clears throat> we started there on Christmas night too. That We we used to start everywhere Christmas for whatever reason. Christmas night in uh, uh, New Orleans, Christmas night in Reunion Arena. I had a 102 degree fever and we worked with Fantastics and it's like a $180,000 house. I'm thinking, oh man, Jesus Christ, we're going to make five grand because I'm used to Watts' payoffs, right? Right. So I got a 102 degree fever. I've flown all day from, from Louisville sick as a dog. I went out there and it was like 25 minute match and I'm throwing a fit and I do my temper tantrum afterwards. And I legitimately don't remember coming back. Bobby's able to get his arm under me and I'm about to pass out. I'm so ill. I forgot, man, we earned our money tonight, boy. We got over these people. $500. I didn't know the Von Erich principle yet. The guys that worked with the Von Erichs that night probably made five grand a piece. We got 500 bucks for having the best match on the card. And so then they started figuring, well, they can't follow the Midnight Fantastics. And I know everybody said, I'm, I'm 80 years old. I'm in a wheelchair. They can't follow me. But they couldn't. Let's face it, they didn't have a goddamn huge talent pool at this time. And like when we go to the spot shows, that's where they couldn't follow the Midnight Express and the Fantastics because we would do spot show stuff, Tennessee stuff. Brian Adidas couldn't follow the Midnight Express and the Fantastics. They don't have four matches. And always one of the boys would be on top in a single with either Gino or Chris. They have two towns a night. Gino would work with Carrie, or I'm sorry, with uh, Kevin, and um, Chris would work with uh, Carrie or vice versa, whatever, they'd right. switch it up. But, but then they started, uh, okay, so they started putting the tag match on last. But we weren't booked as main event, and we didn't get the main event money. So we go to this rodeo barn somewhere with a dirt floor and have dust in our teeth for three days, and we're making 200 bucks, and they're getting on early, beating the crowd, and being back at the bar in Dallas by the time we get out of the shower, and they're making 1000 so every night, every night, are we ever going to get to work with the Vinericks? Ever get to work? Finally, we said, you know what? I don't, we don't want to work with the Vinericks. We, right. we want to go to the Carolinas. <laughs> Call Dusty. Dusty, can we, you know, Jimmy, please, please, all is forgiven. Can we come home, you know? And, well, there's a little something different. We want you to go to Atlanta. Atlanta? Well, Ola's running Atlanta. No, see, in the interim, all that shit had gone on. Um, now Jimmy had control of the Atlanta office that Ole was formerly running, two separate territories. The Carolinas was where you wanted to be. Atlanta was where you're going to be working Duluth, Georgia at the goddamn flea market. And all of the principals came together on the TBS show. He said, well, what we want to do is we want to keep you in Atlanta for six months, keep the rock and roll in Charlotte for six months, keep you all apart, build you all both up, and then put you together. Because the rock and roll had made the smart move straight from Louisiana. 